Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and here I'm doing the uh, 2019 AP Physics 2 free response question number three. Um, uh, if I have any corrections in the solutions, um, because I, I might make a mistake, um, see the description below. And let's get into it. So here's number three. So a group of students used the apparatus shown above to determine the thermal conductivity of a certain type of plastic. A hot plate is used to keep water in a container boiling at a temperature of 100 degrees C. So this is 100 degrees C. They place a slab of the plastic with an area of 0 0.025 meters squared and thickness 0 0.01 meters above the container. So the bottom surface of the slab is at a temperature. Okay, so so the bottom temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. They put a large block of ice with temperature 0 degrees on top of plastic slab. Okay, so the ice is up here at 0 degrees. This is 100 degrees. Some of the ice melts and students measure the amount of water collected time delta T. The students correctly calculate the amount of energy Q delivered into the ice and that's to determine Q over delta T. They repeat this experiment several times, each adding identical slab to increase the total thickness L of the plastic. The results are shown in the table below. The students want to create a graph to yield a straight line whose slope could be used to calculate the thermal conductivity of the plastic. So we got to like use our equations and I'm not as familiar with thermodynamic equations but I believe I use usually Q equals MC delta T, but I think um, for this class, you typically have a different uh, thermal dynamic equation, which is this one, Q over delta T is equals KA delta T over L. No, delta T's and delta T's and you got to remember this is capital T and this is a lowercase t so okay so what are the, all of these parameters um, a is the cross-sectional area and I think they told you the area is here so that's 0 0.025 meters squared um, K is what we're looking for is the thermal conductivity Delta T is the temperature difference. And ideally, if this is 0 degrees C and this is 100 degrees C, then that temperature difference is 100 degrees C. L is sort of the thickness. And that's what's changing, right? The thickness is changing. So that it varies. And it's also like sort of our independent variable. Because I want like Y, like this is sort of my Y is equal to MX, right? So what, what am I assigning M? M is K. Y is this value here, and X is all of this quantity, uh, A delta T over L. So before I plot this thing, like A doesn't really like say anything. I think they're just saying um, to graph it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this is my X value. This is my Y value. And then this is K would then be my slope. So I need to compute this A delta T over L for each of these. So this is A delta temperature over L. So, and I'm just going to use these numbers. So I'm going to use 0 0.025 times 100 divided by 0 0.01. 0 0.025. How come these numbers are way bigger than I think what I I think I did 0 0.1 before, maybe in my solutions. Uh, this is 250. So I probably have a factor of uh, 100 off. This is 125. So look, me doing them again has already yielded uh, a better answer. So if you watched this before, I um, have corrected the PDF solutions then, but I'll, I'll correct those. 0 0.05, 50. I think I was off by a factor of 10 when I did it um, uh, on my own on Sunday. Um, probably because I just didn't uh, type into the calculator correctly. Okay, so these are my numbers. These are my x values. These are my y values. And that's what I want to do. So my x values are going to go about from 0 to 250. So I have five of these. So I think I'm going to make uh, 50. So this would be 150, 100, 150, 200, and 250. My y axis is going to go from 0 to about 100. So we'll make these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100. So 20, 40, 60. 80, 100. Okay, and then so the, the uh, let's units for the quantities. Um, A delta T over L is going to be meters squared, degrees Celsius divided by meters, 
which is meters degrees Celsius because these will cancel. And here it's going to just be joules per second or watts, if you will. Um, so we'll say this is joules per second and this is meters degrees Celsius. Yeah. Okay, so now I just need a plot. So 250, 97. 250, 97, let's see, 80, that means like each of these spacings is 25. No, uh, 20 divided by one, two, three. Uh, they're each five. So 97 would be like somewhere between, uh, a little, you know, between 195 there. Uh, one, let's see, 125 and 53. 125 is here and then 53 50, this would be 40, 45, 50, 53 would be like right about there. Uh, 31 and 83.3, 31, really? No, 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 83.3 and 31. 83 is, let's see, 50, 50, uh, 60, 70, 80, 60, 70, 80, 83 is like slightly above there, and then 31 would be like, right about there then 62.5 and 27 62.5 let's see this is 50 60 62.5 is about here and 27 25 27 is going to be like let's see, 30 there maybe you know, be super precise, but I'm typically not very good at doing these on, um, so I try to plot as accurately as I can. And 50 and 18. 50, about there. Okay. So now my goal is to do a straight line, and I'm going to do a straight line through the origin because, like, it should make sense that it goes through the origin, but you don't necessarily have to do that. If you were to really do this, oops. That's not what I wanted. I forgot I'm using a different tool, so I'm gonna say. Know about that? I don't know. You would have a ruler. You kind of eyeball it. You don't have to be too totally exact on that. Just it's your best. Like, can't argue. I got a couple points below, a couple points above. Maybe like a little more below than above, but. Mm. Close enough. This one's gonna make it easier to do the slopes. So I've 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 calculated that. Um, create a linear graph using the values of the coins indicated. Be sure to do the following: scale the axis, plot the data from the table, draw a line that best represents the data. Use the graph to calculate thermal conductivity of the plastic. So I just want my slope now. My slope is my thermal conductivity, and oh, we'll say the point is about there, and we'll say it's about there. You want kind of two points that are far away. That kind of gives you the most accuracy in your slope, less error. So what is this? We're going to say 250, 100. So K would equal 250. So the Y value is 100. Uh, and then X value is 250. And then down here, I picked 50 and about 20. So I got about 80 over 200. Um, so that's uh, what, um, I should know to do that, 0.4, 0 0.4. Um, and what are the units here? Joules um, per meter second degree Celsius, something like that. I don't know what the units of conductivity are, um, but the numbers work out like that, so. Uh, and indicate one potential problem with the setup that could lead to an experimental value for the thermal conductiv conductivity that is different from the actual value. And use physics principles to explain the effect this problem could have on the experimental value. Um, what I ended up deciding when I read through it, there's a few that I thought about. Um, one I would say is this adding adding layers of plastic on top of each other is not ideal because it's not uniform. You now have an interface that's not necessarily like the same as like a single uniform thing of plastic. So the conductivity is going to be a little bit weaker because adding these layers adds more sort of resistance along the path than like a continuous block of plastic. So that's 
That's kind of what I thought. Originally, my first instinct was to say something about the ice melting. Was like, well, it takes energy to melt the ice, like the heat of fusion or whatever it's called. It, there's some energy that it takes to actually melt the ice. It's not just a change in temperature. But then I reread and it said, well, the students correctly calculate the amount of energy Q delivered to the ice and thus determine Q over T. So I, was, I didn't like that one as much because it does say they correctly calculate the amount of energy. So assume, presumably they included the energy it took to melt the ice. So that wouldn't be as much of a problem. Um, the other things could be things like, well, um, some of the melting of the ice is due to the room temperature. That's one aspect of it. Right, it's not like this is the 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 the, the heat of the plastic is the only thing melting the ice. There's some heat being added. This thing's not really at zero degrees C because the air is now like heating the ice, right? And such, um, it's 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 um, you know, it's causing some melt too, right? And so all so that's one area. Um, also. Yeah, I don't know. I, those are kind of the ideas that came to my mind in terms of what are the, some of the problems with the setup. And so all of those will basically indicate probably a lower thermal, I mean, you will conclude a lower thermal conductivity than it should be. Because with the with the interface, like I was just describing, when I when I, when you have like those gaps in there, there's less less heat transfer between them. So that means high, lower thermal conductivity ultimately. It means it's harder for the heat to get across because you have those gaps. And similarly, if energy is being added to the ice externally, um, how would that affect it? I guess it would melt faster, so your Q over delta T would be higher than what you would expect, and thus you might conclude your current conductivity is even higher. So maybe the so so for this case where I'm melting the ice due to the room temperature, also melting the ice, um, we're we're attributing some energy to the plastic transfer that's actually due to the room cooling the ice or warming the ice and melting it. And so you would overestimate the um, thermal conductivity in that case. So as long as you kind of explain the center, let me know what you guys think, what other ideas you guys had for um, problems with the setup. But those are the ones that I had in mind um, when I originally read the question. So, um, and the rectangle below represents a side view of the plastic slab. Draw a single arrow on the diagram. Oh, a single arrow. That represent the direction of the net flow of energy through the plastic. So just upward, because the heat's being added to the bottom and it's flowing upward. Describe what occurs in the plastic at the microscopic level that explains the energy flow you indicated in part C. So what's happening is um, there's a bunch of little steam particles that are moving really fast because they've been heated up. And they hit the, the particles of plastic here. And these particles of plastic now vibrate. And or not right, but they, they, they kind of move a little bit and they collide with the particles up here and they collide with the particles up here. So the so the, the fast particles hit it and those particles kind of like a wave a little bit um, impart some kinetic energy onto the particles at the bottom of the plastic, which then hit the particles above it, which then hit the particles above it, which then hit the particles above it. And that's how heat transfer ends up happening. Okay, an extra slab sits on a wood surface with both plastic slab and the wood surface at room temperature. A student touches each and finds the plastic slab feels cooler than the wood surface and explain what causes this observation. Okay, so first of all, the important concept is that both of them are at the same temperature. So the wood and the plastic are at the same temperature and that temperature is lower than your body temperature or the student's body temperature. Like your body temperature in your skin, not quite 98 degrees, maybe like 95, 97 degrees, something like that. It varies, but person to person. But at your extremities, it'll be like still 90 degrees, much warmer than a room, which would be somewhere like, you know, maybe 70, 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees centigrade. Um, so basically, um, both of them are cooler than your body. And as you touch something, um, you heat is going to flow from your higher temperature fingers or the student's higher temperature fingers to the lower temperature object. But the plastic feels cooler because the heat flows faster. The thermal transfer is faster. So the plastic has a higher thermal conductivity. Um, and so the heat transfers from your fingers faster on the plastic than the wood, even though there's bo still both heat transfer. And so that is why your finger feels cooler is because more heat is like whisked away uh, into the plastic. So hope you found that helpful. Um, 
Let me know uh, what other um, parts of the experiment you identified for part B. Um, yeah, and let me know how you did. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.